Welcome to our next part on evaluating machine learning models. This unit is on resampling, which is an alternative to holdout splitting, which we discussed in the test data unit. We learned that using holdout training and test splits is much better than estimating the generalization error by using the training data. We also learned about the problem that we get a bad estimate if the test set is too small. In this unit, we try to resolve this issue. Um, the aim of resampling strategies is to assess the performance of learning algorithms in an efficient and in an unbiased fashion. Resampling tries to use the available data more efficiently than simple train and test splits. Instead, in resampling, uh, we repeatedly split the data into training and test data and then average the results we get in the repetitions. So what we do is we make the training set pretty large. The high variability in the test error is mitigated by doing several repetitions and averaging over them. In principle, we do the same as in holdout splitting, just we do it several times. There are different techniques um, how to organize these repetitions. Here we will discuss um, cross-validation, bootstrap, and subsampling as three very common techniques. In cross-validation, we split the data into k roughly equally sized partitions, or also called folds. We use each part once as a test set. The respective remaining parts are then the training set. This way we obtain k test errors, k measures. We average over them to get a stable result. The size of the training and test sets depends on the size of the data and the number of folds. The more folds, the smaller is the test set and the larger is the training set in each iteration. If we have, for example, three folds, we call this type of cross-validation three-fold cross-validation. Here we see an example of three-fold cross-validation. We split the data into three parts. In the first iteration, we use the first part um, as a training data, the first two parts, um, train the model on that data and evaluate it using the remaining third part. In the next iteration, we choose two other parts as training data, um, this time the second and the third. In the third iteration, we use the first and the third part as training data. And uh, in each iteration, we train the model on two parts and evaluate it on the remaining. So this way, in threefold cross-validation, we get three error estimates over which we then average. In um, five-fold cross-validation, we would get five error estimates in 10-fold 10 and so on. So the error estimates here can be any evaluation measure that we learned in the parts on evaluation measures for classification or regression. Um, if there is an imbalanced class distribution, one may do, want to do a variant of, of cross-validation. Stratification in cross-validation tries to keep the distribution of the target class in each fold. So in this example here, the proportion of orange and blue class are always the same in each fold. There are some other variations to cross-validation which you need if you have, for example, groups such as different hospitals or countries. Also, repeated cross-validation has proven um, as a useful strategy to even further reduce the variability issues. So repeated cross-validation means that we do um, cross-validation several times. So five times threefold cross-validation, for example. Before we move on to the next technique, let me leave you with some comments on cross-validation. If you do not know what, the number, what number of folds um, to use, pick one of the most common strategies. Five or 10 folds are usually a good choice. Sometimes a small number of folds results in an issue with the size of the training data. So if you run into convergence issues, for example, try increasing K. If you increase k so much that it equals the number of observations, your test set is of size one. 
Um, this type of cross-validation is called leave one out cross-validation. And we do not recommend it as research suggests that leave one out cross-validation um, has bad behavior in many situations. In general, we can expect that the generalization error estimates resulting from cross-validation tend to be pessimistically biased. We will see that this is also the case for other types of resampling. Our final estimate will probably be worse than the true error as we only use a subset of the data for computing the model. Uh, with smaller k, this bias gets worse. Another issue is that the k training sets have overlapping observations. For this reason, the performance estimates are not independent. This means that for very large k, the variance of the estimated meters get worse and worse because training sets nearly completely overlap. And the test sets get gets um, very small at the same time. If time permits, we recommend doing repeated cross-validation with differing splits. This has been shown to improve the variability of error estimates and thus improves the error estimation, particularly in small samples. So let's get to the next technique, um, bootstrap. The basic idea of bootstrap is to randomly draw B training sets of size N with replacement from our data set. What does that mean? Let's go through that step by step. In our first iteration, we draw N observations from our data sets. We draw with replacement. Otherwise, we would, of course, get the same data set just in a different order. Um, this means that we have some observations twice or even more often in a new data set. Some observations do not make it into the new data set at all. We call these observations out of bag or out of bootstrap observations. In this pictogram here, the train is our original data set. Each colored ball represents one observation. The first bootstrap sample contains the red balls twice and the blue and the black ball once. The green ball is an out of bag observation for this case. We use this new data set to then compute our model. The out of bag observations uh, represent the test data. So we now uh, repeat this procedure B times and then get B error estimates. Typically, um, B, so the number of iterations, is between 30 and 200, depending on how much uh, time or computing power we have. The variance of the bootstrap estimator tends to be smaller than the variance of k-fold cross-validation, as training sets are independently drawn. Um, and discontinuities are uh, smoothed out. As we know that more iterations are in general better as the variance of the estimator decreases with increasing B. Um, as in cross-validation and in holdout splitting, we get a pessimistically biased um, estimator. In Bootstrap, we also just use a subset of the data as we do in cross-validation and holdout splitting. On average, it's 63.2%. Um, and uh, this is also the reason why we get the pessimistically biased um, estimator. One really nice thing about the uh, bootstrapping framework is that it allows us to do inference as well. We can, for example, calculate if there is a significant performance difference between learners or models. As for cross-validation, um, several extensions or variants of bootstrap exist. We will not go into the details, but examples include B632 and B632+, which try to reduce the bias of the error estimate, but are based also on bootstrap. The final resampling technique we want to talk about in this unit is subsampling. In subsampling, we do basically hold it just many times. 
and then average over the measures. This is also called Monte Carlo cross-validation. It is similar to Bootstrap in that it samples the training data from the original data. The difference is that we sample without replacement and we sample less than n observations. Typically, we draw about one fifth or nine tenths of the training data. The remaining data is then used for testing. We know that also in subsampling, we see a pessimistic bias as we do in the other resampling techniques and in holdout. We know that this problem gets worse if the number of observations in the training set gets smaller. So the subsampling sub rate gets smaller. As in repeated cross-validation, we can reduce the variance of the generalization error estimate by increasing the number of repetitions. So doing more repetitions is usually better. Okay, so we just learned about these three resampling techniques for performance evaluation. Let's discuss the idea of resampling a bit before we wrap up. So in uh, machine learning, at the end, we will fit one model on all of our given data. We really need to know how well this model is going to perform in the future because otherwise, well, we're just blind, right? And uh, we don't want to blindly trust our predictor. Um, might be that the model is behaving pretty badly and then we don't want to publish or implement this anywhere. But if we have already used up all of the data during fitting and there is no data left to re reliably compute the performance metric, well, um, that's then a problem. Uh, what we have to do is to approximate the performance metric through a different alternative process. And this is what we use resampling for. The idea is always to repeatedly use some part of the training data, uh, of the data for training. <laughs> and use the rest of the data for, for testing. Then we average over all of these um, repeti repetitions and um, get an overall error estimate. The downside of all resampling techniques is that we get a pessimistic bias in our estimate of the generalization error. What is confusing for a lot of people about resampling is that we compute so many models, but then we don't use them in the end. We use them just to estimate the performance, the generalization error. In the end, we throw all of the trained models out and recompute the selected learner on the entire data set. So what we do all this heavy computation for is essentially just this one number, the estimate of the generalization error. Um, well, however, this is an important number um, that tells us which learner we should use and which hyperparameter settings we should pick. So that's why we still do it. <laughs> um, of course, it's allowed um, to store the models uh, you fitted in resampling, and it's also allowed to look at them. Um, it's maybe also allowed to worry a bit if you see that they are all very, very different and the performance is also very, very different. Um, but in general, the models computed in resampling are not the main thing that we want. We want the estimated generalization error. So let's finish this unit with some practical comments. Um, we already said that five or tenfold cross-validation are somewhat standard nowadays. If your data set is small, it's not a very good idea to use something like holdout or, or cross-validation with few iterations or subsampling with a low subsampling rate. If you have a very small data set, this can uh, cause the estimator to be extremely biased. Uh, we recommend repeated cross-validation for this case. So especially if you have few observations, use repeated cross-validation. Um, below 500 observations is maybe a good rule of thumb. 
Be careful, however, as this rule of thumb does not work if you have strange data sets. A data set that has many rows, for example, um, can have small sample properties. If let's say you only have 100 observations from a certain class. Um, yeah, then you might still also want to do repeated cross-validation. Modern results seem to indicate that subsampling has somewhat better properties uh, than bootstrapping. This is because of repeated uh, of the repeated observations we have in the training set and bootstrapping. They can cause problems in training, especially um, in like nested setups where the training set is split up again in kind of an inner loop. And then you have these repeated measures ending up uh, sim simultaneously in training and test set. And that's really not a good thing because uh, then you again have the problem of uh, training based on observations that are also being used for testing. Um, Sometimes in general, um, repeated measurements themselves can result also in numerical problems um, or general fitting problems of algorithms. So this is also something that we have um, to consider when using Bootstrap. Thanks for listening.